A very good example of, of the upside and downside of um, technology in learning would be, of course, the digital age. Um, it's, only, it's amazing to think that it's only less than 20 years since the internet started. Um, and it's a, a classic example of how science works. When um, it was developed at CERN, nobody imagined it would become a, a literally a world wide web in the way that it has done. Um, I mean, if people really thought it was going to be that popular, they wouldn't have started the addressing system HTTP forward slash forward slash colon, would they? I mean, it would be unthinkable. They would have thought a much simpler way of doing it. And of course, the internet is a fantastic example, I think, of. Um, the good side and the bad side of technology. The good side because, of course, this is one of the most democratising influences in the world at the moment. It gives you free information, free news, enables you to trade, enables you to bank, it enables you to buy goods, it enables you to do all sorts of, get all sorts of services and information for free. Um, and, of course, it gives you uh, political insights into countries as well. But, of course, the downside is that um, it can portray... Uh, misinformation, it can portray violence, it can portray lies, um, and um, at subversion. And of course, when you think of the number of um, people who have been recruited to violent acts, many of them have been recruited as a result of work on the internet. And there's another issue to the internet too, and that is, of course, we've become so reliant on it in commercial affairs that if it was suddenly crashed by um, an agency, that wanted to be, uh, you know, the idea of internet terrorism, for example, that is just simply crashing the internet, it would be something which would seize up many uh, industrial countries. Um, and I think that's true. that sort of thing is true really right across the board. We saw recently with the mobile telephone when BlackBerry stopped uh, being able to transmit signals for a few hours, the chaos that was caused. And you imagine that on a bigger scale when... Uh, for example, in Africa, you're dependent on uh, this is your only method of communication with the outside world. Um, if it suddenly stopped working, uh, it would make a, a massive problem for those societies. So, yes, it is good for learning. Um, the Internet is a fantastic way for all of us of getting information. But one of the issues is how you validate the information you've got and also whether by constantly communicating with a computer, you lose some other human touch in the information. You lose the sensitivity, you might lose the ethics, you might lose some of the softer nuances of the information, which is as important as the information itself. So I think at the moment, as a society, we are still trying to find our way with the computer screen. Um, I don't think, I mean, unlike Baroness Greenfield, who seems to think that learning on the computer is one of the most pernicious things um, available to children. I don't agree with that. I think actually we have to become com computer literate. But I think we have to learn more about um, how that technology is valuable and where it might be misplaced. I think we need to work out how we supervise what goes on on the um, internet. And I think how we um, try to come to terms with a technology which actually essentially is probably not uh, not regulatable. Uh, and that's, I think, a very interesting issue. Um, are computers bad for children? No, I don't think they are bad for children. I think they actually add a huge and important skill in a modern age. But there's no question that if they're to be used well, then there needs to be other education as well, which is not technological, which actually is much more based on the way that we would communicate as humans with eye contact, uh, with hand contact, um, with emotional contact. And that I think is going to be always important for our species because that's how we fundamentally work physiologically.